Welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2022 here in Bucharest in Romania where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today, Mr. Chase Lee, who is the Director of the Telecommunication Standardization Bureau for ITU. Mr. Lee, welcome to the studio. Yes, thank you very much. It's a great opportunity to interview to you. It's a pleasure to see you in here. Yeah. Now, these are your last few months as the uh, Telecommunication Standardization Bureau Director. Um, you've had a, a long and successful uh, term, so um, I think you can be, be very much proud of uh, what you've managed to achieve. I wanted to ask you, what changes have you seen in telecommunications and technology in the standardization sector, and how have the ITU's priorities changed over the last few years? Yeah, it's just really the... Uh, the time flow is really fast. It's already end of my term now. Uh, let me look at this with my experience, the change of these telecommunications. Let me start with this telecom. Telecom operators, they are very struggle to deploy of this 5G successfully. Still, very unfortunately, the key application is not yet clear enough. So they are very struggle in, the, in terms of this business. While they are struggling with this 5G, they are looking for their business, maintaining their business based on the data and cloud. This is a sum of trend, and that definitely influence of our technical standard development as well, because many technologies now coming to support the digital transformation. Because cloud data is an essential part to support the digital transformation. So we standard domains, we have many verticals to join with us, specifically ITU. That was a really amazing journey last several years because uh, almost every year we received several new communities like eSports community. Can you imagine eSports community is our ITU sector member? I was very, very pleased. So that kind of things is a big change. So I think uh, overall ITU, we have to take into account how this digital transformation is needed, ITU's support, how we can uh, engage with this digital transformation. That will be uh, what I foresee uh, during my eight years. We not only enhanced our digital transformation uh, in, the, uh, in the world, but also in the union itself in terms of the events that you have uh, uh, been uh, leading. I think uh, AI for Good Summit, for example, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about its evolution as well. Yeah, this is one of my uh, proud achievements, let me say. Uh, AI, you know, just a return back of this around six or seven years ago, when you talk about AI, always talking about the negative side. AI steal the jobs, AI robot kill the people, so many things, negative side was happening. But in ITO, we wish to look at AI as a technology, we wish to look at the positive side. That is our team's uh, effort. We conclude as a UN agency of ICT, we conclude AI should be good for, so to support the sustainable development goals. That's how we start AI for good five years ago. And our uh, theme was quite right. And uh, many, we are successfully involved with some many experts, uh, very wonderful speakers, wonderful project programs, uh, including uh, Nobel laureates and even young professionals. We uh, successfully mobilized them. And uh, during the five years, we focus how to have to uh, define the action items rather than talk show. So we called show and tell. So we try to crystallize even small piece, but with this small piece, enough to mobilize of this anyone's. As a, so our theme was we invite, we collect, actually collect someone who has a problems, difficulties, and then we invite someone wish to solve their problems. That is AI for good platforms. So I'm very, very uh, proud and that now we reach a uh, really good uh, phase and AI for good is now the most, uh, most well-known AI platform in the world. And it's not just an event that happens 
one week, it's something that's happening now all year round. Yes, no, it's all year round. So since the uh, pandemic, we are all year round. Uh, many of the cases are used of this virtual mode. There's another way to reach out to the communities rather than centralizing based on Geneva, but we reach out to the, each community, each country that was very well accepted. By the way, uh, next year, since uh, uh, the pandemic, we uh, didn't organize the in-person event, but next year we plan of this two days in-person event in Geneva. But while we are continue as always online. Excellent, that's great. And uh, it's nice to see people face to face as well. Looking back over your years, uh, first as a delegate, uh, then as, as, an, as an ITU elected official, uh, we've talked about AI for good, but what are some of the other achievements that you have been most proud of? Yeah, as a delegate, I uh, devoted uh, my delegation time around 27 years since 1987. There are many, many technical developments. So we have a big uh, change of technical development. Uh, most of this of my memory is I challenged how to uh, change our legacy telephone networks to all IP-based, called Next Generation Networks, NGN. And also on top of this engine, how to support a TV streaming service called IPTV. Both two, I was the leader of this, uh, both two groups, and uh, this becoming as a frameworks of this broadband uh, connectivity networks, uh, broadband uh, uh, society now. So this is one of my uh, most proud achievement as a delegation. And as an elected officer, uh, last eight years, one of my, even AI for good is one of my achievements, but in overall, I'm very, very pleased uh, ITUT becoming more relevant standard organization in the world. The many organizations, even other standards like ISO, IEC, they well respect of this ITUT recommendation and also other competing, let me say competing other standard organizations, they also enjoy to refer ITUT recommendations. So this is what I am uh, very proud. With that, ITUT is now going forward to support the digital transformation. Even every year I received more than 100. So last two years I received more than 200 new industry members as an ITU member, so I'm very, very proud. This is one of the clear evidence how I, uh, so, uh, my effort to reach of this, how ITUT more relevant to the world. I would also like to ask you, this is probably going to be one of your uh, last major interviews in your current role. I'm sure you'll be involved in one way or another and we will see you again. But I wanted to ask you, what's your current message at the moment uh, to ITU and, uh, and to all its stakeholders? Yeah, ITU, ITU is a UN special agency for ICT. So ITU, to my observation, is technology-based organization. So we have to, all ITU staff and the ITU members, follow or at least maintain of this, our technical understanding. Our understanding, our talk, our language of this technology should be professional. So I'm really asking this ITU should be maintain our technical knowledge. Based on this technical knowledge, we have to engage to considering the business aspect, market aspect, even political aspect. Without clear understanding of technology, technical sense, the debating of this policy should be uh, very difficult. I, I think it's a, a difficult result. That is one thing. At the international organizations or as other standard organizations, now, international organization develop one standard to fit everybody, uh, apply to all the world. That's not going to happen. This time is gone. Maybe, you know, the next few decades, this kind will be bad. But for the moment, how we can develop our standard to meet, fastly meet of these community's requirements. This is most important. So if we challenge of this, then each community is like a digital divide or providing the connectivity, we can fastly, we can expedite of this, our objective. So this is our message. International organization, 
we need very carefully to look at how we are really meet all these uh, members, those communities require. That is my message. And you said at the beginning, time flies, uh, that uh, it's gone very quickly indeed. Uh, <laughs> I know, as I say, you've been involved with ITU for many years. Uh, out of everything that you've been doing, uh, certainly over the last eight years, let's say, is there anything that you wish you could have sped up a little bit, that could have gone a little bit quicker, that uh, could have evolved a little bit more? Is there anything that you think that I would really like to see progress in, in the coming years? Uh, let me say, digital transformation is not a common language, common objective. That is nice. But digital transformation is technology and the process. That is uh, not our objective. Our objective should be how we can make people smart, how we can make a community sustainable. So next two years, uh, next several years, I think it's all our effort is more address how to make the world smart and sustainable. Digital transformation is a tool, the process. So now, from now, I already started to investigate how I can, my contribution to continue smart, sustainable digital transformation, which I learned of this ITU, and I have uh, many communities, many experts. So I wish to work in together with, with uh, those colleagues in this regard of this, how we can deliver this uh, proper message, proper results for smart, sustainable digital transformation. Well, we wish you the best for the next few months, and of course, your next uh, career steps ahead and uh, look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Chase Abri, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thank you very much. As a last moment, I want to take in this opportunity. I want to thank to my uh, colleagues, uh, TSB colleagues especially. It was my great, great pleasure to work with them. They are the best, best, best staff in <laughs> ITU. I was very lucky. Also, uh, absolutely with the uh, other colleagues uh, helping of this ITUT TSB operation. Thank you very much. Wonderful, I'm sure they'll appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.